what's up, it's Matt in Japan. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're taking a look at the Takarotomi release of Transformers Earthspark Terran Nightshade. So a quick look at the packaging. First thing you'll notice is that she is packaged in her alt mode. I really like how they're doing that with the Earthspark line over here. Uh, it's very refreshing to see Transformers packaged in their alt modes again. So yeah, let's take a quick look at the packaging here. Nothing much. Uh, if you've seen these packages before in my uh, other videos, you know what to expect. I uh, have the Autobot logo up there, Transformers Earthspark, Transformers Earthspark, underneath in Japanese, Takura Tomi of Transformers down the side. There she is in her owl mode. And on the front here, basically just says she changes from Beast to Robot, ESD-05 DX Terran Nightshade. Nothing on the side as it is just an open uh, packaging there. You have product info on the bottom. On the side, you do get a quick little product shot there, Terran Nightshade. On the back, you have some product info on the bottom, and then you do see product images. Uh, again, there's no, you know, the the foreign release, the American release always has like the steps, how many steps it takes to transform. It just says she changes from her beast mode to her ult, uh, from to her robot mode, basically. There's a little blurb about the Earthspark uh, cartoon, and then there's a little blurb about Nightshade and who she is and all that jazz. So anyways, yeah, without further ado, let's get Tarant Nightshade out of the packaging, see what she's all about. All right, here we have Nightshade out of the box. And first of all, let's take a look at uh, her accessories here. She does come with two knives or sort of daggers here. They're just done in a gray plastic and it has sort of like a serrated edge there. And uh, not too much molded detail, but they're pretty cool. And these do just uh, actually in package, they do come and they do just slot on the wings here so you can just easily store them like so. So you can, as I drop it, um, you can just put them back like that. And it actually integrates into the uh, alt mode actually very seamlessly there. So that's actually very cool. So they just fit it right in there. So very, very nice. So um, yeah, I just want to kind of preface this video by saying I do not watch the Earthspark cartoon. I kind of, I think I watched like the first episode or something. But um, anyways, this figure especially really uh, spoke to me. I just, I'm really into the aesthetics of Transformers and the colors and paint and things like that. And uh, Takara Tomi definitely goes all out when they when they repaint figures and things like that. There's not a whole lot of difference in this figure. I think um, there's a little bit of uh, paint difference in the darker green they use right here. And I think this is yellow in the Hasbro version. Other than that, it's pretty much the same. But anyways, uh, that being said, one more thing is that this, this the Japanese release does not come with the Build-A-Figure, Mandroid Build-A-Figures. So as far as the accessories, uh, the knives or the daggers are the only thing that she comes with. So anyways, let's take a close look at her details here in alt mode. Underneath there, you have some sort of light green or kind of uh, yellowish eyes there. And just the paint and the detail on this figure is absolutely beautiful. I love this sort of emerald, sort of jade green. You get that nice metallic green under there and just that head sculpt, for the, it's so cool. I mean, I love owls. Owls are just a really cool animal, always like very mysterious and, and I've always uh, liked owls. But uh, yeah, anyways, uh, and again, that metallic green splayed out on the wings here. It's just real, so nice, the contrast. And you do see in the plastic, it has a little speck finish in the uh, in the plastic there and all over the figure. So it's very cool. I mean, obviously you see some kind of robot kibble and stuff inside there, but yeah, you get some really nice silver paint there. And you do see how his legs are folded up like that. And you just have some detail in the claws on the feet there. And you get a little bit more of that nice metallic green there on the inside of the legs. And uh, yeah, just all over, very nice looking figure. That's how she looks from the back. You can kind of see uh, on the back how she's tucked away. <laughs> hey, Nightshade, what's up? You can see her peeking out the back there. Um, and again, just more of that beautiful uh, sort of metallic green paint all over the figure. So yeah, very, very cool. So that is about it for the alt mode. Um, as far as articulation, her wings are um, on ball joints right here. So there's actually a lot of articulation. They can go all the way around like that. You can kind of put them back like that. You can move them forward like that. You can actually, um, you can actually kind of fold them. And then the wings are on a hinge joint here as well. So you can actually have them like folded down like so. So sort of have like a perched look there. And that silhouette is just so cool. That's, yeah, I just really love the aesthetic look of this figure. So a lot of uh, playability and posability on the wings there. We got a ball joint plus a hinge. Um, as far as the head, it does go all the way around, which is so cool, as an owl should. I mean, they're known for having that full 360 rotation on the head. So just the fact that they did that on this figure is just so cool, just an added bonus there. And then the feet, um, it, it has a little bit of articulation. There's a pin right there. So you can kind of put his feet up and down, but I tend to think that is more for transformation. And he stands up pretty well. 
The real other thing I have for a comparison is the shrapnel from the Transformers Legacy Evolution. Uh, that's the only real other kind of beastie thing I have. So there's a quick comparison between shrapnel and Nightshade. So you can just get a sense of her scale. So yeah, anyways, let's get uh, Nightshade transformed into her robot mode. All right, here we have Trey and Nightshade all transformed into a very cool looking bot mode here. And first thing I just wanna point out is the differences between the Hasbro release and the Takano Tomi release. So first of all, let's take a quick look at the head here. Uh, it looks like the head is about the same. I do think the plastic looks, I don't know, for some reason the plastic looks a little darker on the Takano Tomi release, but not much difference uh, in the eyes and the face. I do think they add some paint on the chin there. The head uh, is also done in sort of a, sort of a gray, sort of an off white color, whereas I think the Hasbro one was silver. Um, going down the chest, it's, uh, this is all the same. They did add more paint here on the waist section. They have some nice metallic green and yellow for the waist, which the Hasbro release did not. Also on the arms, if you notice, uh, this is all painted in that metallic green. I think the Hasbro release has this in yellow. So that is also different. Also the whole upper thigh is painted in that very beautiful emerald sort of uh, nice green metallic green paint there whereas the Hasbro release is just gray and I think also going down the legs not much but I think this part is black on the Hasbro release where it's gray here and also this part is black on the Hasbro release where the Takara Tomi is gray so there are definitely some differences uh Takara Tomi definitely adds a little bit more paint and vibrance to their figures and this is no different so anyways let's uh pause and get into her details all right, details for this Turan Nightshade. Again, let's take a quick look at that head sculpt. Very, very cool. I just love the silhouette. This whole figure is just, you know, has very nice silhouettes in both modes. You get some nice sculpted detail on the head and just the ears pointing out and those just very sort of robotic eyes done in sort of a greenish yellow. And uh, the head sculpt is just really, really cool. You got that little sort of Nova Star emblem on the chest there. And you get some molded detail on the sides here. Again, like I pointed out, the paint uh, on the Takara Tommy release, the, the green and the yellow there. Um, the, the one thing I don't like about this is the sort of owl feet hanging off the arms. I mean, there's not a whole lot you can do with these in this situation, but um, except for just hide them the best you can. Uh, anyways, I just really love these little parts that kind of jut out on the arms and the legs look very cool. Again, that green paint on the legs and all over, it's just so nice, very skinny legs but some really nice just detail again down here on the feet. And she is a little back heavy because of the wings, so it's a little bit difficult to stand up. That's how she looks from the back. Um, it's very clever how the, the uh, owl head switches with the robot head. She does have the uh, little hole there if you wanna pose her on a stand. Um, she does have some hollow bits on the back of her legs. Um, that is basically for transformation, so it you know, really can't be helped. But. For the most part, yeah, this is it's such a cool figure. I just love the silhouette and robot mode. Again, like I said, because of the wings, very back heavy and things like that. Let's do a quick uh, comparison between her and her fellow Earthspark friend here. That is the Deluxe Class Bumblebee. So that is how they scale. And they look pretty good together, actually. So Nightshade is a little bit taller. She's a little bit more lean and thin and tall. Uh, but yeah, that's a quick comparison between her and Bumblebee. Let's pause and get to Nightshade's articulation. Okay, Nightshade is very articulated. Some really nice posability on this figure. So the head is in a, on a ball joint, can go the full 360, just like we saw in the owl mode. The head can go up a little bit, can go down, can go side to side. So you do have some nice expression on the head. Um, getting the wings out of the way, you do have full rotation on the arms there. It is just, again, on a ball joint there. So the arms go all the way around and then but you do have to put them back in order to go down like that. Um, there are, a, there's an upper bicep swivel right there that goes all the way around. And then there is a 90 degree at the elbow. There's nothing at the wrist. Um, and again, these things get in the way of, of articulation a little bit, but yeah, some nice posability on the arms. So you get those. There is no waist uh, articulation, which is very, very unfortunate. I think they easily, it looks like it's cut for the waist there, um, but 
for transformation, she does have a limbo uh, limbo pose here, so she can do the limbo. Um, yeah, I'm not sure why. I mean, I know that's for transformation, but I think they could have gotten a uh, waist joint in there, which is it's very unfortunate for a deluxe figure. But anyways, um, the hips are on ball joints, so you get um, she can kick back that far. She can kick. Whoa, she can kick up that far. And she can, she can't really do the full splits. That kind of is very limited there. Um, but she does have an upper knee bend right there. So a, the knee bend is right here, but there is a swivel right above the knee. And then she definitely has a really deep knee bend, again, for transformation, but it's very cool. And at the feet, uh, that is the, the heel spur there. The feet, uh, because the transformation go up and down like that, there's absolutely no uh, ankle. Ah, I stand corrected. I didn't think there was an ankle rocker joint. There is a little bit of an ankle rocker joint right there. So that is very nice. Again, this very, very poseable and uh, pretty well articulated minus the waist, waist swivel there. And of course, you know, like we saw in Alma, the wings, you know, you can have them, you can have them like that if you want sort of a cleaner look. I kind of like the silhouette of her just having the, uh, the wings out like that. And yeah, she stands pretty well. So anyways, let's uh, pause, give me my final thoughts. Okay, so some final thoughts as Deluxe Class Tarana Nightshade spins around on the old turntable. This is a really great figure. I think the Takarotomi release is really nice. They definitely added a little bit more, um, you know, paint to the figure and just made it really pop. And uh, again, I love the metallic green on this figure, the contrast between the dark greens. And, you know, for me being an artist aesthetically, it's just so pleasing. Both modes are great. The owl mode is awesome. Just love how that head spins around the full 360. Um, and the robot mode is great too. Tons of articulation. You get the accessories. Uh, I can't say enough good things about this figure. Again, I don't watch the Earth Spark cartoon, but I really was drawn to this figure. It's really fun, and I highly recommend the Takarotomi release if you can find it. Anyways, this has been the video review for the Takarotomi Japanese release of Transformers Earth Spark Deluxe Class Taran Nightshade. This has been Matt in Japan. Thanks for watching. As always, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell for more great content. And we'll give her one more spin around here as we finish up. Um, yeah. So all our one, guys. Have a great day.